Hey guys, welcome back. Summer? But how? It was winter just a moment ago. My head must be aching unbearably. As if it was going to explode. Slowly I began to remember. Remember what? What the fuck are we remembering? A long road running off into the distance. Forests, plains, fields, lakes, and forests again. I think I was sleeping, but then, how could I remember all of it? And then, a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear. Then a gap again. And then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason thinking about her made me feel better and calmed me down a little. I felt warmth all over coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then I need to find her! And the best place to look for is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, then stopped, hesitating over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts become clear, and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gulping breaths of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming. Though recalling my self-harm on the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. I am neither dreaming nor dead. A narrow road ahead. A narrow road ran ahead through the field and far into the distance. The exact same road from my dream. I must be very far away from home. And it's not just that. It was a winter yesterday, and it's summer now. It's the whole environment. Of course, summer is usually like this, green and hot. But here, everything is not entirely lifelike. Everything looks like it was taken from the paintings of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century. I mean, it might have been, but I don't know. The grass is just too lush. The bushes, the bushes are not what bushes should be. They are so thick that you can't see anything through them, like treetops, honestly. And the trees themselves? The forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed their ranks and were now just waiting for the order to advance onto the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me once again. Those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Couldn't they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals? That's so last century. I must have reached the point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try to understand what is going on. And while I still have a choice, I should pick the second option. I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course it was scary, but I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or the woods, and this wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link I have with the real world. I should carefully scout the area. A brick wall in its gate crowned the Sovianok sign. Statues of pioneers standing on either side and a road sign nearby showing the bus route number 410. So Sovianok means outlet. Feel free to remember that. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. A person may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like that is probably happening to me now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage to the walls. Sovianok. What could it have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statues, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, the simplest explanation, logically speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange girl, the altered bus, the pioneer camp, 
Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep, from, hal from a hallucination to a time and space shift. None was worse than any other, but there was really no way to pick a single one. Then it occurred to me, I can try to make a phone call. I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list. Well, that's great. But instead of a signal, strength bars, the screen was showing a thick cross. Alright, there may be no signal in such a remote place. Though I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. They do if they're hell buses. I examined the bus from all sides to make sure it wasn't a hallucination. Bits of dirt on the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint and worn out tires. No, this is definitely a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the kind of bus that, which takes you places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep. I gave a nervous chuckle. It came out by itself, sporadically. Because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curb inside the bus and started to wait the, beside the bus, not inside. My patience didn't last long. My anxiety seemed to have reached its peak, and I started to go slightly mad. In such a situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Nope. I would just walk in the camp. Aliens and parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things that I had no time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea. This was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair. Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. God, why? Tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. God damn it, Simeon, man up. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard by the speechless statues of the pioneers and a bird on a tree, which immediately flapped its wings and took off, crying out something in its own bird language as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly, sobbing occasionally. After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared a bit, as if terror and fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, if someone wanted to kill me, what is all this for? I don't know, have you seen Saw? It doesn't look like an experiment either. If this is just one of this, but if this is just some quasi crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Quasi. Anyway, for now it seems like there's no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course the blood was still pounding in my temples, and my hands were still shaking, but at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there's nothing I can really change anyway, so no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it would only make things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there's really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging around here. The, this camp, if of course it really is a camp, looked like the only place where people could be, so I decided to go there, and hardly had I reached the gates when a girl came out from behind them, wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. For the love of God, please not have seen that scene right there. Then again, a pioneer, a pioneer uniform of the 21st century, and then again, a girl here? I froze, unable to take a step. I felt very much like running away, running as far away as I could from this place, from, from this bus, gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. Just running, free like the wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by, winking at the galaxies, running, becoming a pulsar ray, and turning into a vestigial radiation, running to face the unknown. Run, no matter where, as long as it is far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. I could not help but notice her beauty, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work independent in consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cognitive processes, 
the remaining 95% are always busy sustaining life, and in particular ensuring stable function of the hormonal system. I desperately wanted to get less complicated, and stop thinking in formal quotes from an encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taken from an internal law, internal monologue of the hero of some junky softcore crime fiction book. Again, it might be. A pretty Slavic face, long braids that looked like two armfuls of fresh hay, and blue eyes you could drown in. Hi, you must have just arrived. Hmm. Meh. No reason not to. Um, yeah. Alright then, welcome. She smiled broadly. Strange, it looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. Bah! I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was a human, or run away, or what? The blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more, the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull. What's so funny about that? The girl looked me over. It sent shivers down my spine, and my knees started to tremble. N nothing Great, then. Great. What's so great about that? Suddenly a thought crossed my mind. To hell with it all. Forget about the bus behind me. The fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today, I wanted to rip off my itchy sweater and just accept that all this is actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All this is for the best. Would you happen to know... You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look, you go straight ahead to the square, then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates as if I knew what was behind them. Well, you can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna cabin is. Dmitrievna is a patronymic a derivative of a person's father name, in this case, Dmitri, put by Russians after the person's first name as a sign of respect or formal address. She's just gonna be Olga. I, um... Got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I've gotta go now. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seemed as if to her I was something ordinary. And all this show with the bus and the travels while awake or asleep were troubling only me. Well, everything here is just the way it is supposed to be. Camp leader, pioneer uniform. What are they doing, a historical reenactment here? I hope I won't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in the square. But even that would not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. A mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house popped up on the left side. The sign near the door read, Clubs. I was about to come closer when the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me the impression of one suffering for the fate of the whole of mankind with a truly universal sorrow. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what was the best to do, to approach first or wait until she showed showed some initiative. Or maybe run away after all. Although the last option was constantly being suggested only by my self-preservation instinct. At least that's what I'd like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but far from the most logical. If this instinct played poker against deductive abilities, the outcome would be pre predetermined. And those deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting to me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Suddenly somebody jumped out of the nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright red t-shirt with USSR written on it. Such a perfect reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from a distance, and was probably younger than both pioneer girls. The one at the gates and this girl at the door of the clubs. At least I decided to come closer. But the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped towards the first girl and started yelling or something while wildly, while wildly waving her arms. The other girl in turn seemed confused and lowered her gaze, remaining silent. I would have probably continued to observe their amusing dialogue, 
but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started waving it in front of the first girl's face. The something turned out to be a grasshopper. The first girl squealed. She must not be too keen on insects, as she instantly rushed off towards the place where Lenin presumably made his speech about the workers and peasants revolution. This is to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here role-playing as pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seemed so real, if a little embellished, that I was starting to think that in fact my previous life could have been just a dream. And what am I supposed to do now? I was picked at the... I was picking at the cracked pla paving stones with my shoe and started aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. That's when I recalled myself rolling on the grass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. Same. Perhaps it's another instinct. When all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up, the body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen a second option because out of the blue I found the determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of the representative of my own world. I followed the path to the left, on the right side of which stood small cabins, apparently the homes of local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I had never been part of its children's organizations, neither the pioneers, nor even the younger October children. I imagined the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake-up call at 6 o'clock, played by a siren, one minute to make your bed, then joining the formation at the drill square. Or wait, could I be confusing it with something else? Suddenly, something struck me on the back. I staggered but remained on my feet, turned around and prepared to fight heroically for my life. But all I found was another girl standing before me. My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your jaw up off the ground. I closed my mouth. The same pioneer uniform, but the way she was wearing it looked, let's say, provocative. Like all the girls I had met b here before, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her better. New here, are you? Fine. See ya. She threw a sudden, threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn at the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not give off the feeling of some deadly danger, except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last, I managed to make it up to the square. There was no linen or an armored car, although one could easily expect something like that after all that had happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade towered in the middle of the square. The letters on the pedestal read, Jinda. Must be some big figure at the party. There were some small benches at the sides. It's quite pleasant here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyway? Ah, right, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So, to the right! Through a small grove. I came out at the pier. I must have taken a wrong turn. Hey, wrong way! I turned towards the voice. The first girl stood before me. Now, what did I tell you? Take a left at the square, wasn't it? She had changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Slavia. Actually, my full name's Slava Sliviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. So you can too. Um, yeah. 
I still felt a bit confused, so I could not come up with a more meaningful answer. Well, I got it to the door, I guess, so I'll just end the part here since it's close enough. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Peace.